Hey ya, I'm currently developing this rook-like pixel art RPG game called The Chosen One. This week I will show you how I created my random map generation. This devlog will be a little bit more serious than my other ones because I will explain to you my thought process on how I created my random map generation. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, so I won't be part of this video? Nope. It's time to get the reputation of a serious and capable game developer. No jokes? No. No dick jokes? No. No tits? No. Boring. Anyways, so my goal was to create a dungeon layout for the first world that gets randomly generated. Just like in all those other roguelike games. Yeah. Two weeks ago I have created different small maps and I need to combine them in a useful way. This means the player shall be able to explore stuff, he needs decisions where to go next and he needs a way from the starting point to the boss of the world. My first idea was to create this 5x5 grid. Every cell represents a room where the player has to fight enemies, loot boxes and stuff. And you can enter every adjacent cell. Next I randomly select a cell that will be the last room and on top of this cell will be the boss room. Now this would be very boring since every room would have 4 ways out and be basically the same. So I started to randomly add holes that cannot be entered. But this leads to a large number of problems. What if the holes block the way to the boss room? What happens to the other blocked rooms? The layout made no sense anymore really fast. And reconnecting some path afterwards will not only be very difficult, but also leave me with a very scattered layout. My next idea was to add only a few holes and blow them up, but this leads to the same problems. I needed a simpler and more elegant solution. So I decided to tackle the problem the other way around. I start by adding three rooms at random positions and call them knots. The knot that is the furthest away from the starting point will become the pre-boss room and on top of it we will have our boss. Now I just connect these rooms to the starting point and we have a map layout. This layout isn't good yet, but it's a good starting point. So I implemented this method in Unity using a two-dimensional array for the map and the A-star pathfinding algorithm to connect the starting point to the nodes. The A-star pathfinding algorithm is a simple algorithm that finds the shortest path between two points in a grid. If you study computer science, you will most definitely learn it anyways. But if you want to implement this in your project, I can recommend this website for you. The author not only explains the algorithm, but also provides the C-sharp code I used and modified. Here you can see the resulting map I got using this algorithm. The ones are the knots and the twos are the rooms that got generated for the path. Time to improve this algorithm. The first thing I did was to calculate the path between the knots to get some circuits in the map. Here are some results. What I don't like about this solution is that we have a lot of paths laying directly next to each other. To avoid this, I needed to edit the A star algorithm by adding weight. In the beginning, every cell has the cost of 1, which means creating the path with this cell costs 1. A path of length 4 will therefore cost you 4. After I created my first path, it's time to update those weights. A cell that has a room in it gets the weight of 2 and a cell adjacent to such a room gets the weight of 4. When we now calculate the new path we have to keep those new weights in mind. The shortest way would be to go directly upwards but this way would cost 11 now, while going first right and then upwards costs only 10. So this is the path that the algorithm now creates. Here are some example layers generated by the improved algorithm. One thing that still bothers me is that the algorithm always creates path in straight lines. To make the layout more interesting I added some additional weights to the grid at random places. The algorithm will try to create path that avoid those points and this makes it more dynamic and curvier. But if we are unlucky we can still get very boring and straight maps without any decisions. Time to add my last trick. 
outliers, aka dead ends. I want to reward players that are exploring the complete map or that were running in the wrong direction. To do so I need a room where you can for example find a very good weapon but that doesn't help you to get to the end of the world. So after calculating the map I add one more knot that is at least two cells apart from every cell that have been visited yet. Oh, and I expanded the grid cell on the x-axis and placed the outlier on one of those new cells. I reset all the weights so I will get the shortest path from the existing path and then I calculate the new path to the dead end. The player will have to walk through several rooms to reach that point but he will get rewarded for that. And here are some fine layouts I created with this new method. I think these are some interesting maps for the first world, but we will only find out by testing them. <laughs> That's up to future me. Thanks for sticking with me all the video. I hope you liked this one. Please tell me in the comment what you think about this more explaining video style. I would like to know, did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you just skip to the end because you love my outros? Because this is obviously the best part of the video. Tell me in the comments. This weekend I will participate in the mashup game jam. Uh, you can also participate if you want to see if you can do a better game than me in 48 hours. I mean the game jam is 72 hours but it's now too late to do a game in 72 hours because I have to make this video. Yeah. I hope I see you in the next one. Stay tuned.